Hello and welcome you're watching Good Morning India the fuel price hike continues to remain our top focus story here's a quick look at the headlines It's a ninth fuel price rise in 10 days petrol and diesel are up by 80 paise each prices have increased by over 6 rupees a liter in the last 10 days An NDTV World Exclusive the Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba speaks to NDTV after crucial talks between Russia and Ukraine he says there's been no significant withdrawal by Russia he says if if Prime Minister Modi is willing to play mediator we would welcome it his message to the Indian government is please convince Putin to stop this war Flurry of diplomatic activity in New Delhi as top UK and Russian foreign ministers are in Delhi amid the ongoing Ukraine war. British Foreign Minister Liz Truss visit coincides with the Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan loses majority, cancels his speech to the nation. Army and ISI chiefs meet Imran Khan. Bilawal Bhutto says Imran Khan is no longer the Prime Minister. Nawaz Sharif's brother Shahbaz Sharif is the opposition candidate. Sri Lanka's unending nightmare long queues at petrol pumps, 10 hour long power cuts, shortage of medicines. NDTV reports from Ground Zero in Colombo. It's the Aam Aadmi Party versus the BJP again as there's violence and vandalism outside Delhi Chief Minister's house. Aam Aadmi Party alleges the BJP wants to kill Arvind Kejriwal because they can't defeat him. The BJP says the police attacked them with water cannons. Well, our top focus story continues to remain the fuel price rise. Now it is the ninth fuel price hike that we are reporting in the last ten days. Petrol and diesel are up by almost a rupee, eighty paise each to be precise. Prices have increased by over six rupees a liter in the last ten days in your respective cities. Those are the prices that we are tracking from Delhi and Mumbai at the moment. Price of uh, petrol in Delhi is at 101.81 rupees a liter. Diesel in Delhi is at 93.07 rupees a liter. Take a look at the prices in Mumbai as well. Petrol prices in Mumbai now at 116.72 rupees a liter, and diesel also there crossing the 100 mark. Diesel at almost 101 rupees a liter. How is this impacting the common man? Let's listen in. अब ऐसे डेली प्राइस बढ़ेंगे तो हमारे एवरेजेस पे भी असर पड़ेगा, हमारे आने जाने पे भी असर पड़ेगा, और हमारी कीमतों पे भी असर पड़ेगा, महंगाई बढ़ेगी. तो ये तो डेली बढ़ाना तो कोई ठीक नहीं है एकदम से चुनाव जब तक थे जब तक तो ठीक था जब तक तो रोके रखे रेट और अभी भी रशिया से पेट्रोल तो सस्ते में ही आ रहा है इंडिया इंडिया में तो मेरे ख्याल से मुझे लगता है कि ऐसा नहीं करना चाहिए गवर्नमेंट को आई थिंक गवर्नमेंट ऑलरेडी एफर्ट कर रही है कि इसको कैसे नलीफाई किया जाए एंड वी बिलीव इन और गवर्नमेंट ये आसने में जो सर कुछ दिनों बाद जो ना गाड़ी आदमी चला ही नहीं सकता आमदनी कम है खर्चा ज़्यादा है कहाँ से लेके आएंगे इस पर सर हम क्या कहें ये तो सबको ही पता था कि बीजेपी दोबारा आएगी और दाम बढ़ने बढ़ देते हैं हम लोगों में सर सबसे ज़्यादा हम लोगों में फर्क पड़ेगा क्यों जितना उनकी सैलरी नहीं उससे ज़्यादा उनको पेट्रोल का खर्चा रोटी जाना रोज का मैं पैंतीस सत्तर सत्तर किलोमीटर अप डाउन करता हूँ Let's go right across to Himanshu joining us with the very latest uh, Himanshu yet another fuel price hike that we're reporting uh, this of course uh, you know has been a story that has been repeating every day we've been speaking to common people and it's not just the fuel budget but it's the entire household budget that is disrupted because this of course has a ripple effect uh, impacting prices all over That's right if you look at look at it in terms of percentage Uh, I was just looking at the data on March 22nd. The retail price of petrol in Delhi was 95 rupees 40, 41 paisa per liter, and it has now risen by 5 rupees 60 paisa in last 10 days, uh, and uh, 6 rupees 40 paisa. Uh, sorry, uh, in last 10 days, which comes to little over uh, 7%. And remember, if in 10 days the fuel prices go up by 7%. Uh, that of course will hurt the uh, budget of uh, our army of common people 
and this of course will have a spiraling impact now on inflation uh, remember this ukraine war actually uh, started at a time when india was struggling with inflation the inflation rate was already high around 6% now in last 4 weeks because of the continuous increase in energy prices not only petrol and diesel but even natural gas lpg and other uh, important energy sources have become expensive uh, because of the volatility in the and the uncertainty in international energy oil market uh, this of course is bound to have an impact on inflation and this will have a far more damaging impact on the aam aadmi's budget because remember if diesel goes up by 6 rupees 40 paisa in 10 days this is of course going to have a significant impact on the inflation now the question that is being raised in parliament is that if government is aware that a rise of more than 6 rupees uh, in diesel is going to have an impact on inflation then why government is not intervening what should be the ceiling at which government will have to intervene actually to give some kind of relief to common people because you cannot allow because this is what many opposition parties in parliament have told us that you cannot allow the oil companies to keep on increasing prices like this because there has to be a ceiling a level at which government intervenes but at the moment there is no indication rishika that government is going to intervene in this case uh himanshu another quick question what are your sources telling you at the moment because you know initially when we reported on the first two days of the price rise uh you know you'd actually reported on the fact that this could in fact go up to about 12 rupees a liter because that's the correction that the oil companies need to make in order to be able uh you know to balance their prices so is this something that we'll expect to see continue over the next week 10 days as well till that 12 rupees is reached uh that's right that's the important question i mean, I mean uh, you have raised a very very significant question actually uh, see i was looking at the brent crude data just now a couple of minutes back at the moment when i'm talking to you the brent crude oil index is trading at 107.19 dollar per barrel and this has been the level you no know, of course it is 4 dollars less than the highest peak yesterday but the prices have been in this range 107 108 109 dollar per barrel and this of course is the price spectrum uh, which which existed when i had spoken to my sources in the oil industry at that time and this was the price revision they had suggested because remember for four and a half months the oil companies did not change the price of oil and through this period from november 4th until uh, march 22nd this is the time band in which the prices were frozen and this is also the time band in which the crude oil prices increased from around 80 dollars to 110 and 12 dollars so that is around a 40% increase in crude oil price but the petrol and diesel prices remained frozen so this there is also a financial burden that oil companies officials tell us that they have to cover up is the loss in last four and a half months at the time when the crude oil prices were very high and correspondingly the increase in petrol and diesel was not done in india so i think there is financial pressure on the oil companies right. but there is a way out uh, rishika remember last time when government had intervened on november 4th the excise duties were cut and we saw mm-hmm. that the prices had fallen that option government and the state governments have but will they act and we'll have to wait for that rishika. well when the governments did intervene himanshu important to note there uh, it was ahead of election season uh, many uh, you know now jokingly tweeting about the fact that one wishes elections come back really soon in order to give the common man some much needed respite thanks very much for joining us this morning we'll of course continue to track the details of this story very closely let's shift our focus now to an ndtv world exclusive interview the ukrainian foreign minister dmitry kuleba has spoken exclusively to ndtv after the crucial talks between russia and ukraine he says there's been no significant withdrawal by russia his message to the indian government is clear please convince putin to stop this war he's also said that if prime minister modi is willing to play the role of a mediator we would welcome his efforts Mr Kuleba you know you have a fantastic ambassador over here Igor Polika who's been working pretty hard to try and explain to the government of India why India needs to change its position but India has steadfastly maintained uh its neutrality uh they've not voted against Russia in any international forum not at the United Nations uh do you see that as being um, a, a real setback in your relations with New Delhi We understand that India has its uh, own relations with Russia and it tries to uh, uh, to maintain that uh, relationship under the circumstances 
You mentioned the negative kind of uh, uh, sides of uh, voting in the United Nations, but on the other hand, I can say that India did not vote against okay. the, uh, uh, the Ukrainian resolution in the um, UN, UN Security Council, as Russia was hoping uh, to, to do. So uh, it's true that India is trying to balance, <clears throat> but uh, the, the, the message that I can send to my colleagues in the Indian government is simple. In this story, Ukraine is on the right side of history. And Ukraine has always been a reliable consumer of Indian products, uh, mostly pharmaceutical experts from India, but also a guarantor, one of the guarantors of India's food security. Yes. We, uh, we always um, supplied you with sunflower oil, with grains and other, and, uh, and other, other products. So this is a mutually beneficial relationship and we have a request to the government of India to take advantage of the level of relationship that it enjoys with Russia and convince President Putin to stop this war. Do you because see Prime Minister war... Modi, uh, Mr. Kuleba, being a possible mediator between you, uh, President Zelensky, and President Putin? Well, if President, if Prime Minister Modi is willing to play that role, uh, we would uh, welcome his efforts. And while moving on to the other big development we're tracking, it's a rush of diplomatic activity in Delhi today with Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov in India on a two-day visit that starts today. A British Foreign Minister Liz Trust will also be in Delhi today as a part of a wider diplomatic push on the Ukraine war. Her office has said that this is a trip which coincides with the Russian counterpart who's travelling to the country as well. And uh, the visit would be, of course, the highest level visit from uh, Moscow a highest level visit uh, from Britain as well in the light of the Ukraine war. Now, Lavrov's visit is interesting because it follows the Chinese uh, Foreign Minister Wang Yi's visit to Delhi last week, the first in over two years. And despite mounting pressure from the West, China and India haven't condemned, remember, Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Now, Russia's defense ministry has said on Wednesday that Moscow's troops in the Ukrainian cities of Kyiv and Chernihiv were being redeployed. Russia said that this was in order to increase military activity in priority destinations and most importantly, complete the operation to fully liberate the Donbass region, which, remember, is considered to look at as a bit of a climb down on the previous Russian stand. Russia has explained that the first phase of the Russian operation was to make Ukraine concentrate its forces and resources in large cities. So it couldn't use those forces in Moscow's main area of operation, that is Donbass. На Киевском и Черниговском направлениях происходит плановая перегруппировка войск. На первом этапе специальной военной операции, проводимой вооруженными силами России на территории Донбасса и Украины, планировалось заставить противника сконцентрировать свои силы, средства, ресурсы и боевую технику для удержания больших населенных пунктов на этих направлениях, включая Киев. Сковать их на поле боя и без штурма этих городов, во избежание потерь среди гражданского населения, нанести вооруженным формированием киевского режима такое поражение, которое не позволило бы ему использовать эти силы на главном направлении действий наших вооруженных сил на Донбассе. Все эти цели были выполнены. An advisor to the Ukraine president said on Wednesday that the final draft of a ceasefire agreement with Russia could be ready within a couple of days. Mikhailo Podolyak said the draft agreement in uh, the Ukrainian side has ha been handed over to Russian delegates and there is a possibility for Moscow to end the war in safe face. He added that with Russian amendments to the draft, the signing of the preliminary agreement could lead to a meeting between the two countries' presidents. Ми вважаємо, що двосторонній договір з Росією, він, ну, такий буде е, не дуже, не дуже гарантований з точки зору того, що Росія може завжди порушити двосторонні домовленості, але в багатосторонньому договорі, де Росія візьме на себе зобов'язання, в тому числі перед іншими країнами гарантами, ми вважаємо, що це можливість і російській стороні вийти з війни з якимось там обличчям, скажімо так. І тому я думаю, що їх, в принципі, влаштовує договір, тому що іншої формули бути не може. 
Now, the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has said that Western nations shouldn't lift sanctions on Russia until all Moscow's troops have left Ukraine. Johnson said that a ceasefire would not be enough and that the G7 should, in fact, go ahead and intensify sanctions with a ruling program until every single one of Putin's troops is out of Ukraine. Certainly looking at going up a gear now in our support for uh, the Ukrainians in, as they defend themselves. I certainly don't think that you could expect the G7 to lift sanctions uh, simply because there's been a ceasefire in, uh, in Ukraine. And um, that, again, goes straight into Putin's playbook. Um, uh, in my view, we should continue to intensify sanctions with a rolling program uh, until every single one of his troops is, is out of Ukraine. Now, the U.S. President Joe Biden has sent his top advisor and key person leading the administration's economic sanctions on Russia to India. The Deputy National Security Advisor for International Economics, Dilip Singh, an Indian-American, arrived in New Delhi on a two-day visit yesterday. Now, he's also met with, uh, um, in fact, um, Union Minister Piyush Goyal. Piyush Goyal, in fact, uh, tweeted uh, to say that he's met with the U.S. Deputy National Security Advisor and discussed at length steps for further deepening India-U.S. economic and strategic ties. He's also gone on to talk about a complementary partnership that's going to help build resilient economies in a dynamic world order. This is a crucial visit, remember, that's coming in at a time when India has refused to tow America's line against uh, Russia and maintained its own diplomatic stand. Well, on to the other big development we're tracking. The Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan cancelled his planned address to the nation on Wednesday ahead of a no-trust vote. The announcement that he has cancelled the speech came after Pakistani army and the head of the ISI met with Imran Khan. His future looked increasingly in doubt after a key coalition partner, MQMP, switched allegiance ahead of the parliamentary no-confidence vote this weekend. Pakistan's joint opposition now has 177 members of the National Assembly. The majority mark is at 170. 72. Imran Khan has 164 members, which is below the majority mark. The opposition parties on Wednesday held a press conference in which the PPP chairman, Bilawal Bhutto, said that Imran Khan is no longer the Prime Minister and Nawaz Sharif's brother, Shahbaz Sharif, is the opposition candidate. Vizir Azam Saab ka aksariyat mukammal tor pe khatam ho chuka hai. Shahbaz Sharif Saab ne bara sahi or statements, statement spirit mein uh, challenge diya hai vizir azam sahab ko ke wo istifa de hum samajhte hain ki vizir azam sahab ne is waqt tak is mauke tak is kism ki uh, responsibility nahi dikhai hai magar vizir azam sahab ke paas koi option nahi raha wo vizir azam nahi raha darasal 22 crore awam ka muqadma hai जो आज ये मुतदा ऑपरेशन और उनके साथ जिस तरह बाप बाप के खालिद मक्की साहब और आज एमक्यूएम ने ऐलान किया है इसके बाद मैं समझता हूँ कि जमुर का तरीका ये है और एक रवायत ये है कि फिर प्राइम मिनिस्टर चाहे वो सिलेक्टेड क्यों ना हो उनको चाहिए कि जब वो अदवी कुवत खो बैठे हैं पार्लियामान में आज वो इस्तीफा देकर एक नई रीत कायम करें और रवायत कायम करें and while well, with that, we're slipping into a short break. Coming up on the other side, it's Aam Admi Party versus BJP again. Violence and vandalism outside the Delhi Chief Minister's residence yesterday with the AAP alleging that the BJP wants to kill Kejriwal. dramatic scenes yesterday at the Delhi Chief Minister's residence with BJP workers clashing with the police outside Arvind Kejriwal's home during a protest against Arvind Kejriwal's remarks in the recently released controversial movie The Kashmir Files. Senior Aam Aadmi Party leader Manish Sasodia made sensational claims after the protest alleging that the BJP wanted to kill Arvind Kejriwal because they couldn't defeat him in polls. The BJP said that the police attacked them with water cannons while the Ahmadmi party accused the police of just standing by.
And while well, the other big development we're tracking, it's the ninth fuel price hike in the last 10 days. Prices are up by over 6 rupees a litre for petrol and diesel in the last 10 days. The price of petrol in Delhi is at 101.81 rupees a litre. Diesel in Delhi is at 93.07 rupees a litre. Meanwhile, in Mumbai, it's even more expensive with petrol at 116.72 rupees a litre and diesel crossing the 100 rupee mark, in fact, touching 101 rupees a litre. Now, an interesting development. Yoga guru Ramdev was seen on camera losing his school and threatening a journalist who asked him about his comments on, in the past on reducing petrol price. During an event in Karnal in Haryana, the journalist asked the Patanjali brand ambassador about his comment to the media that people should consider a government that can ensure petrol for 40 rupees a litre, cooking gas for 30 rupees a litre. Now, remember, this is something that the yoga guru had said in the past, but when he was asked for his comments on the fuel price rise, this is what he did. कम होगा तो फिर टैक्स नहीं मिलेगा तो देश कैसे चलाएंगे सेना को कैसे तनखा देंगे सड़क कैसे बनाएंगे एयरपोर्ट कैसे बनाएंगे तो दोनों ही पक्ष हैं महंगाई कम होनी चाहिए महंगाई भी ज्यादा भी है तो मेहनत ज्यादा करो भाई मैं भी सुबह सन्यासी होके 4 बजे से लेके 10 बजे तक काम करता हूं मेरे कुण सी छोरी छोरे भूखे मर रहे ऐसे लोग कमाई बाबा जी आपने तो टीवी चैनल पर यह कहा था कि कौन सी सरकार आपको चाहिए 40 रुपए पेट्रोल वाली सरकार 300 रुपए सिलेंडर वाली सरकार बाबा जी अच्छे भी कहा कुछ आप ही ने कहा था सरकार बनाई बनी थी आप ही ने तेरे प्रश्न आपने कहा था कि नहीं कहा था बाबा जी मैंने कहा था पूछ पड़ेगा मेरी हां बाबा जी आपकी कंपनी पर तंजली बाबा जी आपकी कंपनी पर तंजली ऐसे जाता ना आदमी को ना बाबा जी आप ही ने कहा था अरे आदमी को मैं कह रहा भाई ऐसे प्रश्न मत पूछो बाबा जी मैं तेरे प्रश्नों का उत्तर देने के लिए को ठेकेदार ठेकेदार है क्योंकि चुप हो जा अब आगे से पूछेगा तो ठीक नहीं स्वामी जी बाबा जी बात बोल दिया ना स्वामी जी बाबा जी आप एक कश्मीर फाइल फिल्म बड़ी शराफत रखी इतना ज्यादा उद्दंडता नहीं करनी चाहिए तू किसी सभ्य मां-बाप की औलाद जो कहा हम वही पूछ रहे हैं all right, well, Ramdev there losing his school, threatening the journalist that if you ask me questions about the fuel price rise again, it won't be good for you. With that, we're going to slip into a short break. But coming up on the other side, NDTV gets you ground reports amid the worst economic crisis in Sri Lanka. We'll bring you the details. Right outside uh, the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation, one of the largest uh, fuel suppliers uh, for Sri Lanka uh, and also for Colombo. And what we see right here, we can show you visuals that uh, there's huge long serpentine queues that's been made right outside this particular uh, fuel station. And yes, of course, what's also important to note over here is, uh, in fact, uh, Sri Lanka that's been in deep economic crisis has been seeing a steady increase in terms of uh, uh, the fuel pricing. For example, for today's going rate, if you're looking at petrol, the petrol's going rate, what we're looking at is nearly uh, 200 and 54 rupees and when we spoke uh, to the people right here what they also tell us is that uh, in fact it was at least about uh, 100 and um, in fact it was at least 137 per liter and this is just about a month ago which means an increase of nearly 117 rupees just in a matter of one month so we are also looking at where uh, the petrol, the price of petrol has been increased uh, twice in just as many as two or three weeks right now. So definitely is burning a huge hole in the pockets of people. Let me go across to, uh, you know, the common man who's feeling, uh, you know, the as far as uh, uh, this particular economic crisis is concerned. So joining us right now is, uh, a, a, in fact, an auto driver. Your good name? I'm Nimal. Nimal. Uh, okay. Uh, for how, how long have you been driving the auto? In uh, Atta, 
uh, four years now in Colombo. It's been four years. Yeah. Okay. Uh, have you any time, you know, plunged into an economic crisis like this, as bad as this before? Pardon? Something as bad as this that's happening right now, has it ever happened to you before? Yes, yes, yes. Before very good, but too much uh, problem in now because uh, problems are going up. Uh, before, uh, before two months, uh, once uh, double seven, it went one hundred seventy-seven for one liter. Now it will go up. Now two hundred and fifty-four rupees. That's very expensive. Okay. We also see that uh, the tourism sector has not really picked up very well. But how exactly are you managing? You know how you how are you ensuring you're getting through the day? Because earlier you could do so, you could manage. But now, how are you managing your expenses, daily expenses? Uh, yeah, that is very difficult. That is very difficult because before we can earn month maybe five thousand, uh, two thousand, uh, three thousand, four hundred, uh, four thousand rupees. But same figures earning the today also but very expensive petrol going up and other our family expense and other things very going up so very difficult living in Sri Lanka NDTV reporting from Colombo right outside the central bank of Sri Lanka what we see right here is over 20 organizations uh, which includes uh, working professionals, lawyers and also Sinhala organizations. They have all come together protesting right outside the Central Bank of Sri Lanka demanding the resignation of the governor and also the finance minister. Now all that they have been saying right now is it's been several weeks that uh, the government has been reassuring them several times despite the kind of uh, distress the common man has been facing. Not really any of the help has reach them so uh, if we could go across to uh, the people over here who are joining us on NDTV um, what I did see here is y'all were entering the gates of Central Bank of Sri Lanka uh, did you all try to speak to the officials what did they tell you we demanded the resignation of the governor of Central Bank because he got so many allegations against him all of them are corrupt allegations so we demanded the resignation because he's not running the he's not running the central bank independently he's running according to the family instructions the family is the most corrupt family in the history of sri lanka which is the rajapaksha family so we're demanding the finance minister's resignation as well the finance minister Finance Minister is 100% American, he is not a Sri Lankan. I don't know how he managed to get the position of a Finance Minister because he is not a Sri Lankan. So they changed the legislation in the parliament so that their brothers can join the family of thieves to rob the country. Now the country has no, no foreign reserves, they sold the gold in the country, they have robbed the country left, right and centre. Now we are really the begging bowl of the world. We are so embarrassed that we have to go and ask for 100 million from this country, 100 million from that country. Right. We are so embarrassed. We are a proud nation with so much resources and we are the begging bowl of the world all because of the Rajapaksha family looting the people, looting the country, looting the central bank. I'm an IT, IT person, IT, IT uh, uh, entrepreneur, but we have nothing to do because we have our pro own projects spending various amount of money and uh, uh, time, no electricity, no equipment to buy, no repair, because they are doing nothing, but uh, we have to spend our, uh, our lives on the road. I am one of the voters of this corrupted government. Now we have no hope, nothing. Why, why we voted? Our, why, why we vote our young vote? Because of, because of we have our future, we saw our future, but nothing. Nothing for us. Outside Sri Lanka's crisis hit Central Bank, protesters strain at the barricades. The army tries to hold the line. Finally, they are let in. Their target, the Rajapaksha family, which currently rules Sri Lanka. We are the begging bowl of the world, all because of the Rajapaksha family looting the people, looting the country, looting the Central Bank. In another part of the city, kilometre-long queues snake towards petrol and diesel stations. Fuel, like food and medicines, in short supply. Nimal owns an auto, says he had to take a second job to keep up with the soaring fuel prices, which have shot up by 30% since the last two weeks. Before three months, 
my family, my house, two thousand two thousand rupees per day before. Now it will go in up three thousand five hundred rupees more. Uh, more one thousand five hundred rupees. This man owns a tour and travels company. After this crisis, our vehicle price gone up, fuel price gone up, spare parts price gone up, uh, tire price gone up. So we have to control everything. Uh, anyhow, it is a very very uh, you know difficult situation because we just had a very young person telling us that you know he's an IT person where does he have to go they have all come to the streets and just like his story there are many others across not just across Colombo but also across Sri Lanka as well in Colombo with camera person Govind Murthy Srija for NDTV all right, well, let's now get you uh, the other big story we're tracking. Local workers from Kashmir are shaping up India's longest tunnel through Zorjila Pass. The Hyderabad-based company that's building this tunnel says that it's the expertise of local labourers and engineers that's helping them achieve their target ahead of schedule. It's men like Baba Latif from Kashmir's Bandipura, seen here operating a hydraulic drill that form the backbone of the ambitious Zojila Tunnel. The project may be executed by a Hyderabad-based firm, Mega Engineering Infrastructure Limited. But 900 out of 1,000 men working in the 13-kilometer tunnel are from Jammu and Kashmir. This is the machine it is the local workforce who shape an engineering marvel. They have worked at multiple major projects and have got skills how to work at a major project like this. 90% workforce comes from Jammu and Kashmir and also 60% engineers are locals as well. Men like Sartash from Anatna who are installing the piping systems in the tunnel say that they have worked on several such projects before. The outcome of the last 20 years of a construction boom of major projects in railways, road and power in Jammu and Kashmir. Ham tunneling sir, export sir. Pipeline ka jo motors ka wagero camp ka bhi sir. Ji ji sir. To kitne project to me kaam kiya abhi? Mera sir chota sir project sir. More than half of the 200 engineers are also locals. Mirajuddin, a geological expert, speaks of the challenges. We will encounter three formations. One is uh, now in which we are presently, it is Zojila formation. Mm -hmm. After that, it is uh, Panjal volcanics and after that, it is agglomeratic slates. So, but Zojila formation, it will be challenging. As the project races around the clock to beat its deadline, project managers praise the role of locals. I am totally banking upon them. They are producing so much for me, sometimes they surpass my expectations also. If I think today maximum 6 meter tunneling is possible, next morning they said, sir, we have done 7 meter. It's these local workers who did not let the pace drop, even during Kashmir's harsh winters, which may ensure the completion of India's longest tunnel ahead of schedule. With Nazir Masoodi in Zojila, Bureau Report, NDTV. Welcome back. Uh, Congress MPs are protesting against the fuel hike in the national capital and across the country. It's the 10th day since the fuel has been rising. The steepest spike that we're seeing as far as fuel prices are concerned of both petrol and diesel. You can see the MPs on the streets of Delhi uh, protesting against the rise uh, by the government for the 10th consecutive day. आज यहाँ 
हमारे कांग्रेस पार्टी के एम पी और देश में हर स्टेट में हर कैपिटल में डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स और ब्लॉक्स में कांग्रेस पार्टी जो प्राइस राइज है और खासतौर से जो पेट्रोल और डीजल की प्राइस राइज है उस पर एजिटेशन कर रही है पिछले दस दिन में नौ बार पेट्रोल और डीजल के प्राइसेस बढ़ाए गए हैं और इसकी चोट डायरेक्टली सबसे गरीब मिडिल क्लास लोगों को पड़ती है हमारी मांग है कि ये जो प्राइसेस बढ़ती जा रही हैं महंगाई बढ़ती जा रही है और जो पेट्रोल और डीजल के दाम बढ़ते जा रहे हैं इनको सरकार कंट्रोल करे और पेट्रोल और डीजल के दाम बढ़ाना बंद करे तो इसलिए हम सब यहाँ आए हैं पूरे देश में हमारा प्रोटेस्ट चलेगा काफी दिनों के लिए चलेगा तो ये ये हमारा मैसेज है इन इंग्लिश इन इंग्लिश वी कैन सी दैट पेट्रोल एंड डीजल प्राइसेस आर क्लाइमिंग रैपिडली गवर्नमेंट इज मेकिंग थाउजेंड्स एंड थाउजेंड्स ऑफ करोड्स फ्रॉम दिस ओवर द लास्ट टेन डेज नाइन टाइम्स दे हैव बीन रेज कांग्रेस पार्टी इज प्रोटेस्टिंग अक्रॉस द कंट्री इन डिस्ट्रिक्ट ब्लॉक्स स्टेट कैपिटल विद आर एम पी अगेंस्ट दिस प्राइस राइज अगेंस्ट द राइज ऑफ पेट्रोल एंड डीजल प्राइसेस गवर्नमेंट हैज टू स्टॉप डूइंग दिस दिस इज हर्टिंग द पुअरेस्ट पीपल इन द कंट्री एंड इट्स हर्टिंग द मिडिल क्लास गवर्नमेंट हैज टू इंश्योर दैट प्राइसेस डू नॉट राइज एंड दे स्टॉप रेजिंग डीजल एंड पेट्रोल प्राइसेज थैंक यू सर एक सवाल ये है कि आपकी सरकार में चार सौ दस रूपए का सिलेंडर मिलता था मौजूदा वक्त में एक हजार पचास का सिलेंडर मिल रहा है मोदी सरकार ने चुनाव के वक्त में तो नहीं बढ़ाया आखिर किस तरीके से इन लोगों की मंशा है नहीं देखिए वो तो सब लोग जानते हैं गैस सिलेंडर की प्राइस डबल हो गई है एक सौ दो रूपए है पेट्रोल पेट्रोल का दाम आज दिल्ली में ये तो हिस्ट्री में कभी नहीं हुआ है इस लेवल का इस लेवल की प्राइसेस और सरकार सरकार का बड़ा बड़ी सिंपल सोच है कि जितना भी पैसा गरीबों से निकाला जा सकता है उसको निकालो और दो तीन चार बड़े उद्योगपतियों के हाथ कर दो तो यही बेसिकली प्रोसेस यही चल रहा है फायदा किसको हो रहा है फायदा जो सबसे बड़े अरबपति हैं दो तीन उनको हो रहा है और नुकसान किसका है नुकसान गरीबों का है मिडिल क्लास का है और जो आम जनता है उनका है ऑब्वियसली ऑब्वियसली पेट्रोल ऑब्वियसली चुनाव से पहले ये नहीं कर सकते मैंने उस टाइम भी कहा था कि चुनाव के समय मैंने कहा था देश की जनता से कहा था पेट्रोल डीजल भर लो अभी भर लो क्योंकि बाद में मुसीबत आई थैंक यू आई थिंक आई थिंक दर इज अ डिबेट इन पार्लियामेंट ऑन ऑन मंडे थैंक यू सर थैंक यू Well, uh, Rahul Gandhi there uh, protesting with the Congress MPs in the national capital. Like he mentioned, they will be protesting for days on ends, uh, demanding uh, the price of a fuel, whether it's petrol or diesel, be reduced across the country. Like he mentioned, the ninth fuel price hike in the last uh, ten days. Uh, this is after a four months hiatus that the prices of petrol and diesel are rising across the country. When we talk about Delhi, the price is coming in at 101 rupees and 81 paise per liter of petrol and 93 rupees and 7 paise per liter of diesel. As far as Mumbai is concerned, the petrol and diesel prices are coming in at 116 rupees and 72 paise for petrol, 100 rupees and 94 paise for a liter of diesel in the financial capital.